His mother left him newborn when she learned of his illness, but she didn't imagine who adopted him, so she was shocked. His parents left him in the hospital, inside a box, after he was born, without knowing who would find him. Maria was in the delivery room. Her son was about to be born, but it never crossed her mind that, in addition to her own labor pains, she would have to deal with devastating news because her son suffered from Down syndrome. After several years, the doctors managed to remove the little boy from the mother's womb. After they showed him to her, she rejected him immediately when she realized his disability because she knew all the hardships and anguish that would have to happen if she raised a son with such a condition. So she burst into tears even more than the baby himself, and the doctors stared at each other not knowing what to do. At that moment, Virgilio quickly went to meet his first newborn. He arrived at the nursery and was even more alarmed than his wife when he realized that he was the father of that child. So, in all impudence, he hurried to where the woman was and shouted her in front of everyone that he would not take care of this phenomenon, which is why Maria was more shocked and dejected. And even though the delivery was premature, little Amador's health, as the doctors and nurses called him, was very good. He weighed five pounds and all of his organs were working properly. However, he had to stay in the nursery for some tests and for him to regain weight. But let's go back to the events before these unfortunate events. It's well known that when a couple begets a child or desired illusion, it fills us with new life that's gestating in the womb. All of us, without exception, want completely healthy and strong children. However, when things don't go the way we thought those were, sometimes we don't make the right decisions. Maria and Virgilio were a very young couple. He was 19 and she was only 18. Five months after they were married, the girl began to have dizziness and nausea, so she visited the doctor who, after doing some tests, gave her the news that she was pregnant. The young people were happy with such pleasant news, and Maria began to take care of herself. However, they made a strange pact in which they had the complicity of the doctor. They weren't going to use ultrasounds to recognize the baby's gender unless there was a health complication. The gestation period passed normally, but due to these incomprehensible things in life, a week after reaching the seventh month, Maria's feet were taken and she began to feel fatigue. The alarming signs led the frightened couple to the doctor who ordered the immediate hospitalization of the mother because they detected in her the presence of a picture of preeclampsia, a condition that certainly compromised her life and that of her son. Virgilio remained at all times with his beloved Maria. Daily that he took her hand and whispered in her ear that everything was going to be okay that he didn't worry and that he longed for their son to draw on a beautiful look of his mother. All this will end in less than a rooster crow, love, the young father said to his beloved. I know that our little one will be precious and will make us feel very proud of him because he was brought into this world with love and with all the passion that fills us. A couple of weeks after this, the situation got complicated and Maria suffered the pains of premature labor. It was at that moment that Virgilio learned of the terrible suffering with which the child came and uttered those dreadful words. I don't want to be the father of a freak. A few hours later, Maria insistently called Virgilio, who was drinking in a nearby canteen to drown his sorrow. When he finally answered, she told him that he had nothing to worry about because the doctor had informed her that the child had died because he didn't have well-formed organs and that later on he could have healthy and normal children. When Virgilio heard that news, he let out a happy cry and told Maria that he'd come to the hospital to bring her. However, she replied that she was already home. The man came out of the canteen. He took his vehicle and quickly reached his home. So there was Maria, made up and beautiful, as if she had not come home from childbirth. Between them, there were kisses and hugs, promises of eternal love, and to continue their lives together as if the newborn had never existed. He didn't ask about the unfortunate baby's remains, and she did not elaborate on the topic either. However, when Maria's parents called by phone, she limited herself to saying that the child had died and that they'd taken over his little body at the hospital to carry out some studies. Meanwhile, all of this would take place in the house of Virgilio and Maria. In the hospital, the news quickly spread that the mother of that unfortunate newborn had left the hospital without medical discharge, leaving the innocent little Amador to his fate. Weeks passed and Amador remained hospitalized, receiving the love and the affection of nurses who behaved like true surrogate mothers because it gave them deep regret to see how they'd abandoned such an innocent child. The other children who were in neonates were visited by their parents throughout the day. But Amador's crib was always alone. No family member consoled his crying or sang lullabies to him. When noticing that nobody apparently came to visit that baby, 
A woman in fine clothes who had just given birth in the same hospital approached the doctors with her husband, a man of good bearing who was always escorted, and asked the child's family. The head doctor of the ward immediately gave them the sad details of the case without revealing the identity of the parents. Of course, the woman could not contain the crying when she learned that the child had been alone in that hospital for two months. Living on the charity of the medical staff, who carried the disposable diapers that he needed and also his milk. The couple left the doctor's desk and returned to their child's crib. However, in that instant, Amador's future would change forever. That kind woman was Juliana Diversi, the wife of an important public official in the country. Juan Diversi was a rich man who owned a prestigious law firm and who had decided to become a public official to help his country. He owned a large fortune, which had been passed down from generation to generation in his family. He was also a very generous man, a true philanthropist who possessed the gift of mercy and empathy for his fellow men. From that day on, the millionaire and his partner took care of Amador's expenses. They decided they would adopt him. It seemed to them that they kept that sweet and precious child. It would be a good decision. And in this way, they were also going to keep the name that he had already had that he had given him in the hospital. Their daughter, Fernanda, spent a few weeks in the nursery due to a small infection in the respiratory tract. Then she was discharged, and her mother took her away. But she often returned to visit Amador because she felt that she could not get him out of her mind. When the boy reached the required weight and all of his medical examinations were completed, he was discharged and taken to what would become his home, an elegant mansion in which he would have a nurse expressly in charge of his care and, of course, a family that truly loved him. After a few months, when Amador was fully established, the millionaire and his wife decided it was time to baptize their children, whom they had publicly presented as twins. The ceremony was planned lavishly and in great detail, while the high society of the country would attend it. Juliana went through stressful days to make sure everything was what she wanted it to be. Finally, after three weeks of preparations on Easter Sunday in the baptismal font, the children of the diversity couple received the holy waters between tears because it seemed to be cold. After the religious ceremony, they went to the ballroom. Many were the guests who could not hide their astonishment when they saw that Amador had Down syndrome, but none dared to make any comment to avoid a slight to the man, a character much loved and respected by the high society of the country. The next day, the social papers of the nation's leading newspapers were crammed with photos of the millionaire who looked proud of his beautiful family. While Maria and Virgilio ate breakfast, the girl from the service brought to the table as every day a newspaper. Virgilio took the political and economic notes and left them lying down to continue eating, while Maria went straight to the socials and her face changed color when she saw the photos of the millionaire's son. Immediately, she started to feel bad and ran into her room. Virgilio, without imagining what was happening, ran after her but got no response. That day, Amador's blue eyes did not leave the head of the mother who had abandoned him so ruthlessly. The woman spent long hours unable to control her crying. When Virgilio returned, he confronted her, and this time he decided to talk to her. I think the millionaire's son, who is on the news, is our son, the woman said through tears. Immediately, Virgilio jumped out of bed and asked how that was possible if the child had died. Maria revealed the truth. The child did not pass away, as I told you. At that moment, I didn't want to lose you, and I left the hospital without anyone noticing. I was not prepared for people to judge me for being the mother of a child, sick, then you know how other problems I had, Maria said. Well, Virgilio interrupted her in tears and told her why she thought the child belonged to the millionaire that was his son, and she already replied, his blue eyes are unmistakable. I looked at our son for a moment, but I'm a mother and I know for him anywhere. Virgilio was clutching his head and couldn't believe what he was hearing. He picked up his clothes, put them in the suitcase, and decided to get out of there and abandon that woman who had uttered such a horrible lie. But before he left, he said, You know, I felt that the world was coming on me and when I looked at our son, but he was my son, and you abandoned him. Without more or less, you made a decision that did not correspond only to you, and that's something that I'll never forgive you. Please do not look at me, because just as you said that my son has died, now death for me is you, Maria." And it was with those words that the enraged man left without even accepting that he had been the first to reject the creature when he saw it. Maria felt that she was dying from the pressure. She took over her life, but thanks to the advice of her mother, she gradually recovered, and a month before Amador was two years old, she decided that she was going to get her son back. Maria, through her father, a cleaning worker at the millionaire's law firm, managed to make an appointment with him and also with his wife. 
It seemed strange to them, but they invited her to a coffee at their house. When Maria arrived, she was impressed to see how Amador played with his little sister, watched over by a nurse and a babysitter. The boy spoke perfectly, but he was just taking his first steps thanks to the therapies that his parents had given him. The millionaire and his wife received Maria from and were surprised to see her bathed in tears. The woman confessed to them what she had done with her son. Immediately afterwards, the millionaire got up enraged and demanded that the shameless woman leave their house and never come back because she was not worthy of being called a mother when she left her son abandoned like an animal in a box. And he told her, Get out of my house, lady, and don't ever come back here again because I won't have the patience that you see in my house right now. I'll have you put in the dungeon until your bones rot. Amador is our son. He's a happy child who grows up healthy and strong, surrounded by a lot of love, and does not need late regrets from a bad mother, said the millionaire, who had clearly lost his composure in the face of Maria's audacity. Maria went aimlessly. She never heard from Amador again. He grew up surrounded by love and tenderness, and one day he inherited, together with his little sister, the family fortune, convinced that he'd been a blessing to have such loving parents. Definitely, life rewards you, and today the great Amador can enjoy a true family who only gives him love, peace, and tranquility. Thank you, friends, for joining me in the story. If you like the story, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like it, and of course, share it with your friends and family. A hug, and see you soon. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.